Okay, scientists, are you ready to see one last piece of evidence that the puzzle piece that will help us come up with our final explanation for Kitty Parada? Okay, so this is lesson seven, part two, and the title is Analyzing Evidence About Christchurch, New Zealand. So what you're going to need for this lesson is you'll need something to write on and with, someone to talk to. That's very important for this part of the lesson because as you're talking about your ideas with someone else, you can really make an explanation that will be really clear to the New Zealand Farm Council. Okay, and then finally, you need evidence cards A through D. These evidence cards have the different pieces of evidence that you've collected throughout the whole unit we've been doing together. But one of the cards has one tiny little bit of evidence that's going to help you just really connect all the pieces together. Okay, so let's start at the very beginning. When we first started, we were trying to determine why Christchurch, New Zealand's air temperature is cooler during El Nino years. So for the rest of this lesson, we're going to review the pieces of evidence that you've gathered so far, and then we're going to prepare to write our reports to the New Zealand Farm Council. We'll send them an email saying, here is why this is happening in New Zealand. Okay, so we've been working with these claims throughout the unit. We had a claim one, that said the amount of incoming energy from the sun changes during El Nino years. Claim two said something about the Earth's surface, either the land or the water is changing. And claim three, which says something about the air is changing. Maybe the wind, maybe the atmosphere, something like that. So is there, as you're looking at these three claims, based on the evidence so far that we've collected, are there any of these claims that we could eliminate? And yeah, absolutely. We already figured out that claim one can't be true because we learned several lessons ago that the amount of energy from the sun doesn't change during El Nino years. The amount of energy from the sun only changes if you move away from the equator. The equator gets the most energy from the sun and the further away you are, the less energy you have because of the curve of the earth. So we have claim two that says Christchurch's air temperature changed because the ocean current near Christchurch changed. And we have claim three that says Christchurch's air temperature changed because maybe the prevailing winds changed near the equator. So can either claim by itself answer the question? I mean, we know that prevailing winds affect ocean currents, and so that means that these claims are linked together, and we need both ideas to answer the question. So let's combine these two claims together. So we have a new claim, and our new claim is the air temperature is cooler during El Nino years because ocean currents change and prevailing winds change. We, we know that those two things are connected, and so it has to be both of these claims. Okay, so let's look at some evidence that we've collected over the course of this unit. So the first one is evidence card A. And evidence card A says that the ocean surface temperature is changing during El Nino years. So what is this telling us? Well, this matters because this evidence shows that something about the ocean's surface temperature changed. So warm currents usually flow near Christchurch. You can see that during El Nino years, the current is much colder than it was. So usually warm currents flow near Christchurch. And if the current is not warm, then it will transfer less energy to the air, making Christchurch, New Zealand's air temperature cooler than usual. So therefore, the air temperature is cooler during El Nino because ocean currents change and prevailing winds change. So that goes right back to our claim. So let's look at evidence card B. So our second piece of evidence shows the prevailing winds on our planet. And specifically, it shows that the prevailing winds are causing these currents, like we looked at in the first part of our lesson. So this evidence shows that Christchurch's warmer temperature in normal years is caused by 
warm currents. These currents come from the equator. And so the cooler temperature in El Nino years could be caused by a change to the current. So therefore, the air temperature is cooler during El Nino years because ocean currents and prevailing winds change. Okay, so at this point, we're right back to where we ended at the end of part one of this lesson. So now evidence card C is going to tell you something that you didn't know before. And we're going to try to figure out how this evidence fits in with evidence card A and B. So here's what evidence card C says. Okay, during El Nino years, the normal prevailing winds are disrupted. It is possible for them to slow down or reverse. Wow, this just confirms what we already figured out in our last part of this unit, in the last part of our lesson, where we realized that the only way that the ocean currents could be transferring less energy to the air is if the prevailing winds were changing. So if the prevailing winds affect the direction of the currents, um, so a change to wind could cause a change to currents, and so that would change the temperature. So therefore, the air temperature is cooler during El Nino years because ocean currents and prevailing winds change. Okay, so our very final piece of evidence comes from our digital model from the sim. And this shows one image from our first part of this lesson where we showed the normal prevailing winds and how that affected the way the ocean currents flowed and how as they ran against continents how they would have moved down the continent and then got gotten pushed out by other prevailing winds. But the second image over here shows the opposite direction. If prevailing winds change then the current might be moving in a different direction. So the current could be moving in a different direction or it could just be slowing down so much that some of the energy that was coming from the equator just doesn't make it because it took too long to get there and it already transferred to the air in other places. So this connects the evidence of prevailing winds slow down or reverse in El Nino years to help show that there could be a change in the warm current near Christchurch, New Zealand. And so therefore, the air temperature is cooler during El Nino years because the ocean currents and prevailing winds change. So at this point, we are ready to write our explanation to the New Zealand Farm Council. So let's do it. We made it. This is the last video. This is the sixth grade oceans, atmosphere, and climate. Lesson seven, part three, the final video of this unit. In this final video, we are going to actually explain through an email to the New Zealand Farm Council what is going on with the air temperature in Christchurch during El Nino years. So what are you gonna need for this lesson? You're going to need something to write on, something to write with. You might even want to type up your email. That might be something you can kind of like copy and paste stuff and go back and change it. Or if you prefer to write something out, that's fine. Or you could just pull in a parent from somewhere in your house or a brother or sister, some family member that's hanging around your house with you or call a friend and just say, hey, I'm gonna explain to you what I would tell Kitty Parada and explain to them what you've learned in this unit about why the air temperature in Christchurch is changing during El Nino years. So here's our claim. Our claim is that the air temperature is cooler during El Nino years because ocean currents and prevailing winds change. So scientists have to investigate in order to figure things out. So do you think you're there? Have you figured out why the air temperature in Christchurch is cooler in El Nino year. So this is the claim that we figured out. So how could we write a letter to uh, Kitty Parada? So in our letter, we're going to want to explain how energy is transferred from a warm ocean current to the air during normal years, and how during El Nino years, the ocean current isn't as warm as it normally is because the prevailing winds which caused the current have slowed down or reversed. Okay, so let's do this. 
Here is an example email that I took all of the things that you figured out and typed it up so that we can send it to Kitty Parada. But before you read the email or listen to me read it to you, I want you to pause the video and take a moment to either say out loud or to tell someone else everything that you would include in an email to the New Zealand Farm Council and then come back and compare what you said or wrote to what I have typed up on this page for us to read together. Okay, let's read this email together. Dear Kitty Parada and the entire New Zealand Farm Council, I'm excited to share with you what the student climatologists have discovered about why Christchurch New Zealand's air temperature is cooler during El Nino years. During El Nino years, the prevailing winds at the equator slow down. Since these winds are responsible for pushing surface ocean currents at the equator towards Christchurch, if the winds slow down, that means that the ocean currents traveling towards Christchurch also slow down. Ocean currents carry energy transferred from the sun, but currents don't carry that energy as far if they're moving more slowly. Since Christchurch is south of the equator, that means there won't be as much energy brought to this location by the slow current. The air temperature of Christchurch is determined by how much energy is in the air. Because energy is transferred from the ocean to the air, the air temperature in Christchurch is affected by the temperature of the ocean. In El Nino years, the ocean near Christchurch is cooler because the slower current is bringing less energy from the equator. So less energy will be transferred from the ocean to the air above it, making the air temperature of Christchurch a little cooler than it is in years without an El Nino effect. Sincerely, student climatologists. I'm so excited to have been on this journey with you, student climatologists. I have been delighted to discover along with you the different pieces of evidence that we used to write this letter. And I know that the New Zealand Farm Council will be excited to read your response and help them understand why the air is so cold. And they'll start to be able to figure out ways that they can solve problems around their farm when the air temperature is colder. Thank you so much for helping the farmers in New Zealand solve this problem. You've been great.